Hi, and welcome back to The Lifestyle Show with me, Pam Joseph. Right, next we have um, a lovely lady um, by the name of Myrna Loy. No, she is not that Hollywood actress. <laughs> this is our very own Myrna Loy. Myrna, are you with me? Author of Lovers Rock is more than a dance floor. Myrna, how are you? Long oh, time. I'm doing fine, thank you. <laughs> My gosh, Mary, you're looking great, actually. What oh, thank it? you. What cream you're using? Yeah? Let That's me know. Natural. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this. Um, Lover's Rock is more than a dance floor. Talk to me. Okay, basically, I um, when we was listen when we was all talked to um, social media with Steve McQueen, um, many of us felt it didn't represent us very well. So what happened was, is that I personally felt I had a responsibility to correct a perceived wrong. And basically it's more than a dance floor because it is what motivated us back in the day. It's what, it was healing, it had healing properties. There was so much to um, Lover's Rock that when we watched it from Steve McQueen's perspective, it was like menacing, it was predatory. Um, it ma made you feel unsafe. Whereas we, as women in particular, we felt respected, our boundaries weren't crossed, and we felt as though we were being nurtured. And I think with Lover's Rock, it is about um, healing. And when you have so many people back in the day, we were, we had the riots going on. Many of us were from adverse, um, had adverse childhood experiences. Many of us were, you know, ill-treated or abused. And so when we went to the Lover's Rock dance, it was a way of feeling validated, feeling noticed, of getting a little attention. When you're in somebody's arms, it's a way of feeling nurtured and, you know, and it's attachment forming. And from that dance floor, you actually ended up in long-term relationships. So in my book, I actually talk about the relationship yeah. that I experienced, some of the relationships out of the dance floor yeah. that I went through. <laughs> you know, the only reason you're making me laugh because I'm thinking of certain things. See, it's, it's a reality. It really is what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it brings back memories. But go ahead, get me on, go. I mean, you're very intimate, isn't it? I mean, in, in the dark, on the dance floor, you were extremely intimate. Sometimes with a stranger, actually a literal stranger, but we're so intimate in that, in that, um, yeah, in that. Um... And it was intimate. It was like intimacy with no commitment. <laughs> and you'd even find married people going to the dance floor and dancing with someone and there's nothing to it. You don't feel as though you're being unfaithful. It's really just a dance. But it's quite it's quite strange because when you think you're simulating sex on the dance floor, because that's exactly what you're doing, you know, and then but you've got almost like permission to do that. Yeah. I mean, a stranger coming in and seeing us performing like that would yeah. say we're giving ourselves up to being raped or abused or whatever. Wow. But that's happening it was it had its own internal boundaries indeed um you, you got footnotes i i had to laugh no no before we do the footnotes no i've got to say about some of the clothing now my gosh Myrna, when you we talk about the burberries talk about the pleated skirts we talk about the crew necks we talk about the tank tops we talk about this and that but in all respect of it how expensive were the clothings that these young people, because we were young, Lily and Harper says, somebody said to me once, it's a, a share the joke pack. She said, no, sorry. Somebody said, well, it's too intimate. Somebody said to Lily and Harper, actually, we dance too intimately, perhaps on the dance floor. Ooh, would you agree with that? Well, I think that when you're thinking about why we were doing it, yes, it was very, very intimate. Mm. But I think I think they were. I'm not going to say everyone that was that went to the dance floor was broken, but I don't think we had those kind of boundaries. I mean, now we're much more conscious. Back then, we weren't so conscious about boundaries and whether or not you should touch somebody or how somebody should hold you and wind up your body. And you don't even know these people from Adam. You're dancing with a silhouette. 
You know what I mean? And then when the light's going on, you're like, oh my God, was I dancing with anyone? You know what I mean? <laughs> when the light's going on, you say, like, ugh. <laughs> Only someone once did that. My girl was asking, Brenda now asked me to share the joke. The reason I'm laughing, Brenda, is because it does bring back memories. And what, what Merna is saying is absolutely true. It was strangers. It was literally a stranger. And we got that close and intimate. And I know other dances could be even more that you saw people really sort of, you know, getting involved, um, um, you know, with, with, with the, the dance. And, and, and yeah, you're right. We, we didn't really look at it as if it was anything wrong. That, that's true. But your footnotes, um, I have to talk about this. Um, you had to put some of the, the footnotes there so people don't under, they can understand this. So you, you're saying that when you talk about um, saps and butter, men who work <laughs> confidence, saps and butter. Now, that is new to me. I've never heard saps and butter. Men who lack confidence. Are these the men that were too shy to tell a woman, ask a woman to dance? Yeah, I think the saps were the soft men and butter, you know, butter melts. Mm. But those guys are kind of all right, though, once they pulled up the courage, because I think they were rather more gentlemanly than the ones that were a bit more forceful. Yes, they were more gentlemanly, but I think a lot of the women preferred the men that just kind of got hold of their hands and pulled them towards them. I mean, you did have those that kind of stand on the side and they're waiting forever, aren't they? Really. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing you said, chips, spelled C-H-O-O-P-S, chips, means kiss and teeth. A mark of jovial disapproval, usually. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I really love that. A mark of jovial disapproval. Actually, a person got arrested for kissing his teeth. Um, but, you know, which which was looked at as being somewhat rather very rude. Oh, like so that just shows you the difference in, you know, cultural, they don't understand cultural nuances, do they? That's right, absolutely. Um, uh, uh, walkless, W-U-C-K-L-E-S-S, -S, meaning worthless. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, talk to, talk to us about this. I mean, these you put those in, it's, it's all in the book, but you needed to make people understand what you mean when you say that. So yeah. someone who is worthless, a person who is worthless, um, called a walkless. Um, does that, um, do you, did you know that on the dance floor? Would you know a person if their person was? worthless well you would you would know just basically the thing is the walk list part comes later on when my mother was talking about <laughs> i'm gonna say you really look good feisty saps and butter how about introverts how about introverts i mean you know introverts were i don't know introverts were all right i i think they're all right I don't know. What do you say, man? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think, uh, the thing is, with Love Rock, we weren't as conscious as we are now. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the first thing we have to take into consideration. We can pick Love Rock apart. Back then, it was the way to, it was, it was normal. You know, you, you, you left your house and the thing you want to do, I have to get a dance. And you, you knew you was getting a dance with a stranger. You knew that man would probably be nuzzling your neck. You knew he'd be pressing against your body. You knew all of that. But yeah. it was comforting. And it was for those people who came from homes there where their parents were emotionally cold or if they had some other kind of trauma going on. When you go into that dance floor and you have somebody looking at you and smiling at you and admiring you and saying you look nice, and can I dance with you? It's a form of validation. And so it wasn't, it it does look, if you look at it now, it looks bad the way we were dancing. But back then, it was normal. It was normal, very normal. Um, I, I, I started to talk about the clothing that um, was, was, was worn and most popular at the time, very expensive clothing, because when, when you talk about the clothing, you talk about the farrah, the slacks, farrah slacks. I mean, those weren't cheap. Um, oh. when you talk, mm, and when you talk about Burberry, those weren't cheap. And if you couldn't do the Burberry, though, it was M&S. And yeah. to think about it, Myrna, we, in a way, dressed as if we were older people. Pleated skirt, crew, turtle neck. Yeah, it was very elegant, wasn't it? It was more or less, and very conservative. Very conservative. But I think what we were about back then is about making a statement that we were worth something, that we would put our money aside. And we used to put down 
every every week we'd go to the shops and we'd put our money down and we'd make sure we could afford the bourbon. We could afford everything, the crew neck, the cashmere, the gold, everything. And yeah. so, yes, it was expensive. I mean, our skirts, I mean, back then must have cost about 50 quid. I mean, I was looking at today's prices. I think they're about 185 pounds. Oh, um, um, it was normal and and safe for uh, uh, good vibes um, in in terms of um, dancing as we did. Thing that's from um, uh, Dion. Um, in other words, says classy. It was classy. We were classy. We were classy. We were. We didn't know that we were dressing like an older person. We just thought that's the way to dress. And yeah. Guys were, oh, the guys were really smart and eloquent. I love the guys. You didn't come out in your jeans. You didn't no. come out in jeans halfway down your down your, your your legs. You you know you came out dressed. With, well, we're talking before. Well, everything. yeah, the tonic suits and everything. I mean, men looked sharp. Sharp. The Rudy Liquid says we had style back in the day. Today, casual or mix up, people um go party and train. Yeah, it's true. Like, oh, that is true. The, 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 come and ask if you are dancing on when you have on your good good dress. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and we made such an effort. And and they the men uh, loved us for that. And we loved the men for the fact that they took that effort in grooming themselves and, and, and looking really, really dapper. And, and we loved them for that. And it is great. This book is going to reflect with so many people when they read this book. It's going to be like, yeah, I remember that. I'm going to laugh because you got me laughing. They're saying it's a joke, Pam, but it just automatically, I, you just sent me back. And I'm laughing at it all because it's true. Absolutely. I just thought that's what I wanted to do. I wanted just to correct a perceived wrong. And I wanted to show that Lovers Rock was more than what we saw on that dance floor. Well, you know, we've got children, we've got grandchildren, and all of the people, our generation are dying. I mean, just Friday, four people died. I don't want people to die leaving that legacy that was on um on the small lack series yeah you know we had to correct it and i felt i i mean i had to do it pretty quickly because it needs to be relevant and it needs to um be now so mm -hmm. that's why i just went all in and i produced it as quickly as i could and i do hope it does it will resonate with a lot of people it will it will lillian harper says it sounds like a good read good lillian go out and get it now where can they get this book from quickly <laughs> Amazon, they can get it on Amazon, it's on Kindle, it's on paperback. And yeah. like I said, you know, I've even extended, I've, it's, I've made it very personal. I've given my own personal experiences, what I went through. So, yeah, so I think people will engage with that. And, and before you go off, you know what I do, you should remember this. A couple of books for competition, how many can you give us? Four. Four. What's the question? The question, this is. <laughs> You did not ask me that before. Give me a question. Give me something you've said. Something you've said. Something I've said. Uh, what is the? What is more than a dance floor? Why is it more than a dance floor? There's your question. All right. Lifestyle on Ben at hotmail.co.uk. And can we have them signed? Um, and Merlin, I know you're going to do that. Have them signed. So you've got a chance of getting this book. Merlin Loy, um, author of Lovers Rock. It's more than a dance floor. And signed book by Myrna herself. What, say it again, what is more than a dance floor? What is more than a dance floor? That, that is, is the question. question. That's the question. Lovely. Myrna, love you, darling. Take okay, care. Take care, care soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, short break now. See you soon.